just an outline of, of my part is uh, basically the focus will be on QuantSeq and if time permits I will show a couple of examples from our user cases. So for those of you who are not very well familiar with Lexigen, we are um, here already for almost nine years and our headquarters are in Austria, in Vienna. Uh, we have subsidiary in New Hampshire here in the US. Uh, we are a multinational team and our focus is exclusively on RNA and RNA sequencing tools for NG and NGS. Right, so when we look at the RNA experiment, um, starting from sample, so from sample through RNA extraction, library prep, sequencing and data analysis, this is where our kids come in. Essentially, we have protocols for most of these steps. And today's focus is on QuantSeq. This slide, I probably, I don't need to stop here for long because most of you are probably well familiar with RNA-seq. But just a summary, so what can we do with it? We can um, study gene expression. We can detect isoform splice variants novel transcripts, gene fusions, we can identify transcription start sites, end sites, uh, rare common transcripts, we can derive strand information with high precision. I would like to group these applications into two groups. Um, and the idea is that for detecting isoforms, splice variants, novel transcripts, gene, gene fusions, you most likely need to sequence the whole transcript. Whereas for transcription start site and site identification, just specific position would be enough. So gene expression profiling falls somewhere in between. I mean, we can also use whole transcriptome sequencing for gene expression detection, uh, or we can just sequence specific, specific position and identify the transcript. Essentially, there are two major types of RNA-seq and they have conceptual differences. When we look at the whole transcriptome sequencing, we work with mRNA or total RNA-seq uh, and we do the novel assembly of transcripts, we detect isoforms, we also can perform expression profiling. And here we generate uh, multiple fragments per transcript. So we have, we have many reads per one transcript. Now for expression profiling sequencing, would be enough just to count the number of sequences. So essentially we can sequence just one fragment per transcript and in the ideal case even would be enough to have one read per transcript um, if we could sequence the same positions of all different transcripts. Therefore, before uh, proceeding with your RNA-seq experiment, it is, it is worth giving a more careful thought which protocol is actually necessary for me? Do I really need to do whole transcriptome sequencing? Do I need to prepare a library for the whole transcript? Or would it be enough to generate just a fragment per transcript? And our conclusion is that when one does expression profiling sequencing, it would be enough to have just a fragment and after uh, that allows you to have higher number of multiplexing and um, significantly less computational, uh, co computational resources. Quantic, that's our answer to uh, efficient expression profiling um, experiment. There are two types of Quantic that we offer. This is Quantic 3 prime seq and Quantic Flex. The workflow of QuantSeq is quite straightforward. You start with your poly -A RNA and um, select for the poly -A tail using oligo DT reverse transcription primer. After reverse transcription, the RNA is removed and the second strand synthesis is initiated by random priming. So then you have your double strand cDNA library, which can be further um, PCR amplified to generate library for sequencing. Quantic Flex has the only difference that here you can add your own primers for reverse transcription and for second strand synthesis. And the primers here can be either 
oligodity based or random or, or tar, um, with a specific sequence for RD or uh, targeted or random for the second strand synthesis. So in the end you have four versions of generating your fragment. When it comes to sequencing, Quancy has two choices. There, were, there is a version called forward and another one reverse. With the forward version, NGS reads will be generated towards the poly A tail, and they are reflecting the mRNA sequence. With the reverse version, NGS reads start directly at the three prime end of the transcripts. So the first called base would be the first base of the three prime UTR. Um, this version is suitable for paired in sequencing. Now this plot shows you that one major benefit of quantity can be visualized by plotting coverage across the normalized length of the transcript. And here we have the coverage for the mRNA-seq, for the conventional full transcript mRNA-seq, which is shown in gray color. And the lines show um, data based on ERCC spike in standards. And the quantity, which is shown here in gray, and the number is uh, reflecting area on the curve. And when you have the ratio between these two numbers, here in this case it is 12.4, we say that this is sort of a minimal amount of, that's the, that's the, um, that's the number by which shows you how much you can actually, uh, how much you can save on sequencing space. So how much more multiplexing you can actually do. Assuming that it is enough to have just one fragment per transcript. With Quantic, bioinformatic analysis is also simpler because um, read mapping is simplified by skipping the junction detection. So you can use faster aligners. Uh, and concentration calculation is much more straightforward because you don't need to do FPKM, RPKM length normalization. So, cost cal calculations. So here I, I remember very well um, a phrase which I heard from one person who is also attending this meeting and he is running a core facility and he said, you know, even if I minimize the cost of library prep, still my sequencing stays the same. So therefore, in the end, I don't necessarily choose the cheapest library prep because I, I still care about the sequencing cost. And therefore, you know, the way to make a RNA-seq experiment affordable and not expensive is first to reduce library prep cost, but the second is to reduce the sequencing cost. And if we cannot reduce machine cost, then we can at least multiplex more. And that's what QuantSeq is offering. So we have up to 96 barcodes, um, and, and because of this one fragment, the transcript, one can multiplex all of them in one lane, and therefore we end up with a cost of roughly 35 to 50 dollars per sample. That's when you multiplex 96 or 48 samples in one lane of high, uh, high seek 2,500 at single read 100. So summarizing, QuantSeq is a fast and simple all-in-one protocol. It has wide input range. It works from as little as 100 picograms of total RNA input. It is suitable for degraded samples. It is a very user-friendly protocol because in less than five hours you have your library from total RNA to ready to sequence sample. It allows for high number of multiplexing and the barcodes are already included in the kit. Available for Illumina and Ion Torrent sequencers. It's automation friendly. So there is a significant reduction of the cost. There is no need for length normalization and it has very high strand specificity. Therefore, we say that it is a good alternative to microarrays and uh, qPCR. So concluding, whole transcriptome sequencing and expression profiling sequencing are distinct applications. And for efficient expression profiling, a dedicated library prep is needed that focuses on the sequencing on the specific region of interest. Quantic provides highly efficient and very cost-effective solution for expression profiling. And 
I still would like to add that CoinSeq is a versatile protocol for transcriptome studies. I would like to acknowledge our co-developers of this kit, uh, Research Center for Molecular Medicine of the Austrian Academy of Sciences, and customers who kindly share their data. And I thank you for your attention. Um,